Wellspring Church of All Nations presents Screams in the Desert, hosted by Pastors George and Sharon Stoke. dynamic Las Vegas couple bring the life-changing Word of God alive through anointed prophetic ministry. Their teaching causes mountain-moving faith to bring the victory of God's love to bear on the everyday issues of life. Join George and Sharon now as they share with you the secrets and joys of a fulfilling, abundant, spirit-filled, and spirit-led life. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you today about a dream and a seed and a covenant, a dream and a seed and a covenant. And uh, as usual, it's the beginning of a series. Hallelujah. I'm not a serial killer. I'm a serial preacher. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Camera ready? Sounds ready? All of that? Okay. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 11. God's going to do something great for you. Yeah. You say, how do you know that? Because I know him. He's just can hardly wait to get a blessing to you. He loves you so much. Is that good? That's good. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 11. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times. I love this verse. I just love this verse. A thousand times so many more as you are and bless you as he has promised you. A thousand times. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> I'll take that. That'd make us a pretty big company, wouldn't it? If we each became a thousand times more than we are. Hallelujah. <laughs> why not? I said, why not? Hmm? Is there a limit in God? No, never. No limitation in the Spirit. No limitations in the Spirit. No limitations in the glory. <laughs> None. None. Hallelujah. Get get her autograph now. She's going to become a famous author. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Have her signed now. Right? Amen. Amen. I, 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 lo I love being in a house full of possibilities. Potentialities. I'm excited about Oscar. You know, if he gets rich enough, he buy, may buy me a new Harley. You never know. <laughs> yeah, you can have the old one if he buys me a new one. That's a deal. Okay, you all heard it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory. A dream. God's vision. God's purpose. God's destiny for your life. And see, most of us, we just think, well, you know, I'm on my own. I have a dream. I want to meet Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright and, you know, get a job and have kids. and Maybe I want a house. Well, you are, yeah, you've been through that, so you know, yeah. Uh, but, you know, yeah, that, that's right. Or, or whatever. You, know, you, you, you may, I mean, we have uh, our, our pilot to be there in the back, amen. He's uh, so excited because he's actually going to get to lift off here pretty soon. And that's wonderful. And those are exciting things. But God has exceeding abundantly above and beyond anything you can imagine, ask, or think. And I hope you understand that. And, and I, I, love, I love the way Dr. John keeps bringing back the peas because if we can get a hold of those things, it, it helps to elevate us, to get us actually believing there's more than where we are. Don't ever settle for mediocre. 
because God is exceeding abundantly above. And he, he has a particular, if you, if, if you may have a particular problem that God has equipped you to solve and, and a particular place you're called and equipped to fill that you haven't even found yet. That, in fact, God spoke that to Oscar really this morning. There is a place already prepared for him where he will, he will be the answer. And because of that, he will excel. And actually, each of you has that in you. God has placed that in you. And, and unfortunately, many of us spend years in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing. And why do we do it? Well, we do it to make a living. You know, well, it's a job. I got a job. Praise God for a job. I mean, that is great. But to, to limit yourself, see, can, can be a trap because God has placed certain things in you that if he can get you in that place, you become the answer that, 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 that will just catapult you into success because success is actually how well you serve others. You fill a need by the Holy Ghost. You know, uh, uh, Reverend Robert, Robert Schuller, he built the Crystal Cathedral on that premise. Find a need, fill it with the Holy Ghost. It's a powerful concept, but one that, that many, many, even Christians just miss. Because we're so filled with churchianity instead of Christianity. And, and, and we can just, we go through the motions. And we've got to quit going through the motions and get a hold of God. Hear from God. See? See God. What, you know, I'm, I, every day I'm out walking around the pad now seven times. Man, that is dumb. You know, it's cold, the wind blows, it's just like, no, it's not dumb because God said, go do it. Well, why are you doing it? I want it built. And if that's what he tells me to do, I mean, it, I don't understand that. But I know that if I'll do what he tells me to do or shows me to do, that suddenly a miracle will come and something other, something supernatural will come into the natural and everything will change. Because I don't know if you've all figured it out or not, but a congregation of this size with, with the income levels that we have, at least I don't think that we can get it done. Which is great, because if it's impossible with man, it's an opportunity for a display of God's divine, majestic glory and power to come breaking in on the scene and just shake everybody up. And that's, that's really what I want. That's all I care about. Is, is for God to get the glory. And, and you know, you, in the natural, you will never achieve your full potential, but when you plug into God, He will take you into what he, His divine destiny for you. He will fulfill Jeremiah 29, 11, which is He decreed a prophetic thing concerning you, and if you will yield to it, He'll bring you into your divine destiny, and that will be the very thing that just totally fulfills you. So we need, we need to have a dream. And, and there's a seed. God is the, is, is the resource. Uh, the, 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 the seed is the resource God uses to fulfill your destiny. All the elements you need to fulfill your destiny are already inside you. You have to understand that. You, you've got things in you you haven't even tapped yet. You don't know your potential. You don't know what you're capable of. You don't know what you can do. Fear will try and keep you from realizing your full potential. But if you'll let God nurture that seed that He placed within you, you'll grow into all that you're meant to grow into. Hallelujah. And I don't think you're ever too young or ever too old to just make a decision. I'm going to go God's way. And I, I'm going to quit going the way I'm going, and I'm just going to begin to get a hold of him and let him place me where I was destined to be. And the covenant, this is God's promise and agreement, that you'll see the harvest of the seed you sow. I wonder how often we give money or give time or, or give love or give attention or whatever we do, and we really aren't expecting anything back. And I'm not saying that we do everything to get, but to, to just have an expectation that if I'm walking in the light 
of God, in the life of God, that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him, and that, that if he can find a faithful steward, somebody faithful in a little, he's going to begin to pour in more and more and more and more in and through them. And, and it'll stretch you. You'll, 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 you'll say to yourself, I can't do this. But you'll hear that still small voice, the voice of God speaking and say, you can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth you. Hallelujah. And as you, you, you sow resources, you release God to increase you. Hmm? Hallelujah. And the covenant, God's promise and agreement that you will, you will, you will see the harvest. And he'll multiply you a thousand times more than you are if you'll stay in faithful agreement with him. That, that's, that's just, I love that. A thousand times more. I mean, we don't want to have that many natural kids, obviously. <laughs> but spiritual kids, yeah, absolutely. Impact on the world, on our society. God knows it needs an impact. <laughs> A Christian witness in the land. You know, and and that, that's... that's the work of the Holy Ghost, but he needs people like you and I to just get in and move with him. Hallelujah. The dream, Genesis 15, 1, the dream within you, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision saying, fear not, and that's the first thing, you just need to get rid of it, no fear here, fear not. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Fear not. He says, Abram, I am your shield and I am your exceeding great reward. I think if God shields you, you're, you're pretty well covered, pretty well protected from the fiery darts of the enemy. Amen? Hallelujah. I am, he said, the exceeding great reward. I'll, I'll never forget when my mother disowned me. Some of you have heard the story, some of you haven't, but just encapsulated. When my mother was a practicing witch. And, of course, once I became a, a Christian, she disowned me. Well, then, then just before she passed away, she got born again. She got saved. Praise God. That was awesome. But her will and, and last will and testament had already been written, and she gave away the family inheritance to the American Cancer Society. She was dying of cancer. Well, you can't hardly fault her in that, but I was feeling a little bummed out because I, I have a church to build. You know, I have ministry, right? And I thought, boy, I could really use that money for the ministry. And it's gone. And so I'm, I, I don't know. I think I was actually mumbling, maybe grumbling a little, maybe just feeling sorry for myself. I don't know. But I'm on my way home, and I almost jumped out of the car. And I'm driving when the audible voice of God just says, but son, what is your problem? I said, all that money's gone. I mean, I don't understand, Lord. I really don't understand. And he says, but I am your inheritance. Oh, no problem. I mean, that just lifted it all off, right? If God's my inheritance, I mean, that's a pretty good inheritance. That's better than anything my mama could have given me. I am your exceeding great Reward. If we can get that and understand, we're not limited by the world. We're, we're, the limits are off because God is our inheritance and he holds our destiny, our future. And God knows I've made enough mistakes along the way that I should have been really either incarcerated in federal prison for life or, or dead. But that was God had another plan. He, he can get you past yourself. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> and Abram turned his back on the offer of the king of Sodom that, because the king of Sodom wanted to give him uh, material things. He said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I don't want what the world has to offer. I don't want what the devil is offering me. I only want what God gives me. I want to be able to stand up and say, the Lord did this. The Lord gave me this. The Lord made me rich. Abram said to the king of Sodom in, in Genesis uh, 14, 22, it's recorded, I've lift up my hand to the Lord, the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Well, if he possesses heaven and earth, he possesses even what that king of Sodom owned. And if he wants to make a transfer, he'll do it. Don't, don't need a man to do it. And in the same way, you have to realize that, that the world is not your dream. Hmm? The world is not your dream. God said, I am your exceeding great reward. Don't, don't sell out for a, for a little, little, if you're really fortunate, 100, 120 years of maybe good things when you could have great things for eternity. I mean, you know, this, this, is, this is nothing. I saw a guy the other day, and it, it was so good. He had only he had a rope, and and he had about this much of it painted red. Here's 120 years if you live that long, right here. And we place all of our energy and all of our effort and all of our hopes and all of everything on that when this is eternity that you're going to be alive that God has laid up for you, and it just keep going there. You know, to get the perspective of what I'm, what I'm involved with, you know, and, and especially as a Christian, because all of that is for me, for you. We'll rule and reign with him. We're training for reigning. Let's not, let's not spend this little bit of time being paupers, being, being servants, being slaves, being in bondage. Let's, let's let him set us free now and let that just disappear and become a part of the whole. Which is really what he wants to do. We, we have to, the, the world's not, not our dream. Knowing God is the ultimate in life. It's amazing. John Bridge, when he was here, you know, he's talking about walking around in glory and all this stuff. And you go, hmm, this is strange, dude. This guy's weird. But the thing is that he went back a transformed man, a changed man. And now money is flooding into this ministry in India. And they're building orphanage buildings and churches. And I mean, the money's just coming in. They can't build fast enough. I don't know if he picked up a piece of pavement in heaven or what. You know, the streets are supposed to be gold there. Amen? And, and, and God has to become your source. The, the moment Abram separated from the world, God showed him a vision of the future. He said, take a look at the stars. How will this do for uh, progeny? Oh, don't miss the sand of the sea. That's even more than a thousand times more. Amen? Look now toward heaven, he says. Genesis 15, 5. He brought him forth abroad and said, Now, look toward the heaven. Tell the stars. Can you number them? So shall your seed be. Go out. So when you're really getting depressed, you know, you're really getting down, go out and, of course, you have to get out of the city because human the, the lights, they, they kind of blot out. But just get out where there's no lights and look at the stars. And if you haven't done that in a while, that'll just take your breath away because it's just magnificent up there. It's phenomenal. But then, then start counting. And then consider that the plans God has for you are that magnificent, that out there, that beyond what you can ask or think. It's beyond comprehension, and only the Holy Spirit can really reveal it to you since your mind won't ever accept it. And that's where we're trapped, is right here, between here and here. And we need to, we need to get our spiritual senses on. Do you realize you, can, you have spiritual eyes? 
just like you have natural eyes, you have a spiritual ears, just like you have natural ears, you have a spiritual sense of smell, just like you have a natural sense of smell, you have a spiritual sense of taste, everything. You, 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 we need to tune those so we can begin to move in the realm of the things of the Spirit and begin to accomplish what God has really called us to accomplish on earth. See, our nation is, because we have lived naturally now, our nation is in a, just in a mess. We're murdering babies, just butchering babies. We don't care if they're still alive after we, you know, we attempt to abort them. We'll just kill them. We'll save a whale or spot an owl, but kill a baby. You know, and, and, and now we have finally convinced ourselves that surely God is just so loving and so good that, that he erased everything that he said about homosexuality. And now we ought to be able to let girls marry girls and boys marry girls, uh, boys and just whatever. And, I mean, we're insane. We're upside down. We don't know what's going on. Because we've lost it. Our spiritual senses are dead. And it's, it's, unfortunately, it's in the church. There's as much abortion in the church. There's as much divorce in the church. There's as much pornography in the church. There's, and, and that is because we become a naturally minded people and let the world sell us its goods because we have never experienced the glories of heaven that make all this stuff down here look like nothing. I mean nothing. See, I don't know about you. Let, let me just meddle with you a little bit. Did anybody here not like sex? Do, see, <laughs> those of you that have ever experienced it, you think it's probably the greatest thing on planet Earth. Don't look at me like that. That's spiritual. You know, a facade. You, you know what I'm talking about. Huh? Sex in marriage is a phenomenal thing. Just awesome. I mean, it's even so good that when it's outside of the context of God, and people are just doing what they shouldn't be doing, they still, it has so much allure that they're just, the, everybody's doing it. Come on. Now, God says, there's no sex in heaven. And we go, I don't want to go there. I've had a guy tell me, hey, no sex in heaven. I'm, I want to go to hell. <laughs> Forget it, man. You know? Because there's no spiritual understanding. God said what's in heaven is going to be better. I don't understand better. Oh, come on. Get real with me today. Quit being all stick in the muddy. Huh? I'm serious. Whatever you think is the absolute ultimate here on earth is nothing compared to what is laid up in store in glory. Do I comprehend it? No, I can't even wrap my mind around that, but I'm ready for some. <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. Huh? We, we just don't get it. We want, to settle. we want to settle for nothing. We get mad at people like Ken Copeland. Hey, one of the rich preachers got airplanes. Yeah, he's got his own airport too. And his own lake. Well, he's rich. Well, yeah, but he started out in an old wrecked out car just believing in God. Well, some people do that. No, anybody can do that. God's no respecter of persons. I mean, his story will not, may not be your story, but your story can be so much grander than, than it is. That's the whole thing. Amen. If you can let go and let God. Get a hold of the dream God has for you. Uh, it, you know, just in the financial realm. I mean, God, God told him to go talk to the owner of that property, which used to be an Air Force base. That's why it had a landing strip and all that stuff already there. When he talks to the guy, and the guy doesn't want to sell it. And he can't afford to buy it. Now what, what are you doing? You're wasting everybody's time. But as it turned out, the guy agreed to sell it to him for, for in a way that he could actually kind of sort of, only if God really moved, buy it. And he bought it. And they went along for a few years. And it was, you know, it's tight. When you move into a new place, you've got to fix everything up and do a lot of, there's just a lot. Of, I don't care how many millions you make, you're always going to be short. Because there's so much to do. There's always more to do. And then all of a sudden they find out there's one of the largest natural gas deposits in the United States underneath this property. He says, hallelujah, no more problems. And God says, don't touch it. 
you're a faith preacher and I want, you can't teach people faith if you've got something like that that's natural. Ow! Right? Until one day, and God said, okay, now you can do it. Build your own electric plant. And sell electricity back to the power company. So that's what they did. I mean, it. you read stories like that and you think, that can't happen. Oh, but it does. It happens all of the time. To, to, to one degree or another. But it's only when we expect it. It's only when we believe it. The believer is the receiver. Lift up your eyes and see. Hmm? See all the rams which leap. You remember that? You know, here's Laban, and he's been out Laban, and out Joseph, and, uh, you know... And then, then this thing comes. I mean, can you imagine? Here you are, and you've, you've really messed up, and you've got yourself indentured, more or less, to, this, to Uncle Laban, who is a big, bigger con man than you ever thought of being. Right? And, and, and there you are. And then God says, gives you this idea. Tell, tell, tell this guy that, you know, whatever, stri whatever, whatever sheep come out, you know, the, the cattle and the sheep that come out striped, you know, you get to keep, and the ones that come out plain, he gets to keep, and all. And they've all been coming out pretty plain. And then God, you know, okay, that's great. So I make this deal, and God says, okay, now you get some sticks and just put stripes on them and stick them out in front of the, the livestock. And when they give birth, all their offspring is going to be striped and straight. Man, God, you're insane. That, nothing like that would ever work, would it? I mean, in the natural, can, can you really picture that? You know, and say, now wait a minute. I never heard of anything like this working before. God takes the foolish things to confound the wise. All we need to do is like children, well, like children used to be, be obedient. Of course, the kids here, they're all obedient. Amen. You're not a children anymore. He's a children. Okay, all right. Obedient. Amen. But see, that's all, that's all. If we come to God like a little child, we're willing to really believe that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And, and who knows? And then we hear some weird thing. We say, is that really you? That's crazy. Yeah, that's me. Oh, okay, I'll do it. Whatsoever he says to you, do it. And watch and see what will happen. God's dream comes to you at the point of your greatest pain and desperation. If you're in pain and desperation today, you might as well shout glory because you're right there. You're ready for a miracle. Hmm? Amen. And it came to pass at the time the cattle conceived that I lifted up my eyes. I saw in a dream, behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straked, speckled, and grizzled. And the angel of the Lord God spoke to me in a dream, saying, Jacob. And I said, Here am I. And he said, Lift up your eyes now. See, all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straked, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban has done to you. And God said, It's time for me now to move supernaturally in your life and release you from your bondage. Now, that's the time we're living in. I really believe that. We're coming, up, we're coming up to the end. But it's going to be a glorious end. Jesus is not coming back for the church right now that's all stained and, and sullied. and I mean, really. I just love what Rush Limbaugh said the other day. You know, there was somebody on his program, and he said, oh, you know, it just, uh, it, it, some lady, you know, and she said, we ought to, it's so difficult for all of us college girls or whoever it was, you know, because you know, all my friends and everything, they just, oh, they need condoms, and you should give them free, and yak, 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 and he, you know, he turns around, and he says, excuse me, he says, you're telling me that all these girls are having so much extramarital, you know, all this promiscuity and stuff that they can't afford contraception. He says, you know what we used to call that? Slut. <laughs> I love it. Oh, media went ballistic. How could he say such a thing? Because he's got a brain. <laughs> and some sense of moral value. Huh? God. 
Ah, my, my, my. What if we really did things the way God said to do them? What if we got the wisdom to really, really do what God said to do? We've got to see with our spirit the future God has for us. I mean, just, 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 along, just along the lines of this, you know, this thing in our society that where everybody, it's like trying how to use car, you know, they're just, you know, nobody wants to wait to get married. I, I had, there was a couple good friends of mine, that, in fact, they're, they're good churchgoers and tithers out in Henderson now, got a wonderful, beautiful family, and they were shacked up, they were living together, they were significant others, whatever you want to call them, you know, and, uh, they, they, wanted, they wanted a baby and they came to me because they wanted a baby. I have a ministry of, if you want to get pregnant, I'm the guy. I'll lay hands on you, you'll have twins. It's just my history, you know. So anyway, uh, but anyway, they came to me and they, we, we talked. I said, okay, the first thing you guys need to do, do you love each other? Yeah, we love, we're, you're going to spend the rest of your life? Well, yeah, we're planning on it. I said, good, get married. Oh, you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. It was, this would be good. You know, this would really be good. I said, but there's a problem now. And they said, well, you marry us. I said, yeah, I'd be glad to marry you. But then, of course, it goes with a hitch. You have to have marital counseling. I don't do weddings without marital counseling because it'll give you a 50% better chance of successful marriage. And I, of course, you've already shot, you know, you've negated that already. So we really need to catch up and get you to ground zero because people that don't get marital counseling and get married have a 50% less chance of staying married. So anyway, I got them back to ground zero. And I said, oh, there's one more thing. Between now and the wedding, no sex. I mean, <laughs> you thought I'd shot them. I mean, it was just, <laughs> are you serious? I said, I am serious. I don't know if we can do that. I said, you can do it. Trust me, you can do it. You're not going to be able to sleep in the same bed. You know. So anyway, I think he moved out on the couch. And they did. They, they held it, right? So everything, we went through the marital counseling. We had a wonderful wedding. And they were so happy. And she was such a beautiful bride. And they went home and they did what newly married couples do. They both came back to me and said, Oh, Pastor, thank you. Thank you. I thought it was good before. This is fantastic. I said, yes, because you're operating under the will of God. Don't settle for the counterfeit, right? So then we prayed for him to have a child. And, of course, he couldn't, supposedly. <laughs> so they were going to adopt. And they came to me. Don't come to me and talk about adoption. I did that. And I don't, you know, I just, I will try to talk you out of it. I really will. There's a big thing about genetics. There really is, you know. And they came back, talked to me. We decided, I said, look, let's trust God. And just hold off on the adoption thing, okay? They have three lovely daughters now. Not all at once. <laughs> they were very thrilled about that. But praise the Lord. See, if you, do th if, you can, if you can get out of the way the world's doing it and do it the way God designed it, it is better, far better than you could ever imagine. And, and, and that's just the way it is. The, the seed, there's a future within you. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8. Knowing that whatever good thing any man does, the same shall he receive of the Lord. Did you hear me, Doug? We were talking about that this morning. Whatever good thing, see? Whatever good thing, knowing that whatever good thing a man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. A dream without a seed will never come to pass. You've got to plant a seed. Hmm? A seed is anything you do for someone else that you want God to do for you. See, we're not just talking money. Everybody thinks all this, all this seed faith stuff is all money. No, it, it has to do with finances. And most of us are interested in that because we're trying to pay the bills and get the kids to college and all of that. But it's anything you do for someone else that God wants to do for you. And you may not know God wants you to do it. You may not know you're going to have need of anything. I befriended a man who was antagonistic to the church. 
But I befriended him. We had Jesus in common. You know, we had a lot of differences, but who cares? The more you develop a relationship and you talk, your differences begin to melt and sit, they become insignificant. But we developed a relationship. Helped him with some things. Helped him, helped him get his, his 501c3 and get his organization set up and so he could really do what he needed to do in the ministry. No idea or thought of a return. Now, we're writing books. I just finished one. It just got published on Integrity, The Last Great Battle. And, but Pastor Sharon is writing one that's just full of pictures for our ministerial fellowship. And, and it's really, it's a monumental project. And along comes this guy. Hey, I got a program that'll do everything you want to do. And it'll be print ready. So you'll save a lot of money on your, on your printing. He says, can I give it to you? It's a $2,500 suite. He gave it to us. And had the rights to do it. I'm not real big on pirated stuff. He had, he had a corporate license. He could do that. Then he says, now I know you don't know how to use it. So can I come over and I'll spend a couple days with you and I'll teach you how to use this stuff. So he did. And he was thrilled to do it because he was helping us. And we were thrilled that he was helping us because we needed help. But we had no idea that he had the answer to, to our problem a couple of several years later. Didn't No idea. And yet that's the way God does things. You give and it shall be given. Pressed down, shaken together, overflowing, shall men. So relationships are good. But it's a seed. A dream without a seed is, is, is just, it's, it's dead. But that, that seed of the future is in you. The resources, the ideas, the time, the talents, the finances. And he says, bring me, Genesis 59, bring me a sacrifice. <laughs> bring me a sacrifice. Abram asked how he would know he would indeed inherit the land. And God instructed him to bring a sacrifice. He planted a seed for the future when he gave something he had in order to receive something he did not yet have. We, we need to pour a slab out here. We need to get rough electrical, rough plumbing, the rest of the foundation done, the slab poured. And, and we're doing pretty good on getting enough money to do at least part of that. But we need a lot. So we got a gift of $5,000 towards the building fund from another ministry that came, I believe, because we seeded into that ministry. That ministry then released funds to us. Well, when you get money, you need to tithe on it. At least we believe that, that we should always find some place to put 10% of whatever comes in. So our daughter church, River of Life Word Ministries, now has a building project, and they're struggling to get the money together to do what they need to do. We can take the tithe and give it to them, and we have seeded into their building project, and I'll guarantee you we'll have a miracle of finance come in for ourselves. Because I've done it before. It always works. You have need, so a seed of some kind. Bring me a sacrifice, God says. The covenant uh, is, is the agreement with you. God made a covenant with Abram. In Genesis 15, 18, he said, In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. It's a covenant is an agreement between two parties. Sharon and I, when we got married, made a covenant. That's what the marriage vows are. It's a covenant. An unbreakable covenant. Hallelujah. It's supposed to be. Right? For better or for worse. Sickness and his health. You know, all that wonderful stuff. <laughs> hmm? Richer or poorer. Yes. But it's a covenant. That's what holds you together. That's what holds your, your relationship with God together is the covenant. We'll have communion at the end of the service. It's, it's a covenant meal. That's really all it is. We're, we're affirming that we're still in covenant with Him. 
knowing he is in covenant with us. He'll never, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And he can't lie. So we can trust that. But we need to come before him and say, you know what? We recognize our human frailty, but as far as within us is, we're in covenant with you. We're still here. We're yours. We've made the agreement. We're going to stick by it. All that, all that I am, all that I have is his. It's not mine. I was bought with a price. So were you. But all that is his is yours. Because you were the prize that took Jesus to the cross for the prize. God made a covenant with Abram through giving him a dream and a seed to plant for the dream to come to pass. You, you stay in agreement with God by faith in order for the dream to come to pass. Time will pass. You'll face the test. You'll face the troubles. But you know what? That's before the harvest comes. The farmer plants and then he doesn't fret and stew and worry whether it's going to come up or not. He just does whatever it is he needs to do. A little water here. Let the sun do what the sun does. Pray for rain. Let the rain come. And in its season, the harvest comes up. You, you don't doubt or come out of agreement with the Lord that the seed you planted will indeed reap a harvest. You say, oh, well, I've doubted. Yeah, but don't doubt in your heart. Don't let your thinker, which is a stinker, mess up your believer. What God said is what's true. Not what I think, not what I feel, not what it looks like. Hmm? God promised that in the fourth generation, His descendants would return and possess the land. Well, not all of us want to wait that long. But I think that's a problem in American society today. See, my parents worked so I could have a better life. They didn't give me anything. I earned my own bicycle. I earned my own car. I paid, I paid my way. They were training me. But they, they worked to, to see to it that I'd have... It was for me, even if Mom gave it all away. Hmm? But, but there's, that's a mentality. I hope there were, there were generations that wanted their children to have a better chance. And people are coming to this country from all over the world for that very reason. There's opportunity here that there is nowhere else in the world. Okay? And they come in here and they, think, they say, I will, I will do anything to give my kids an opportunity in this country. Well, if the world's coming here for that, we who, who were born and raised here ought to at least appreciate what we've got. And realize God could have put you in the middle of Mongolia. Come on. But he put you here. That means there's something really, really <laughs> phenomenal that he wants you to do. He's given you a head start. He's put you on the highest platform on planet Earth to become something that most people would never even conceive of. Timing and seasons enter into the harvest. And whenever the oppressor attacks you, it's a signal your season is changing and your multiplication has arrived. Huh? Oh, the devil's after me. Hallelujah! I'm ready for a breakthrough. Amen. Just when he's about to, to, to deliver that punch, I'm going to knock him clear out of the ballpark. Because God's with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis 15, 13 through 16. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Oh, man, don't want to wait that long. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards they shall come out of, with great substance. And thou shalt go unto thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. A thousand times more. God had it lined up. They had to wait for 400 years after they went into bondage. But the promise was sure. And if God can orchestrate all of that over that much time, don't you think he can take care of you in your life? Me and my life. Hallelujah. In the year 2000, when the Lord told me there'd be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine, and we're in like the fifth year of famine right now. Duh. You know, you look around, you go, wow, this is, no, I saw it coming. I knew it was coming. 
I would holler and scream, you know, don't go into debt. Don't use plastic on Christmas. Just, you know, why? I wanted to get you ready. Because the guy with the cash today rules. The guy with the gold makes the rules. If you don't have debt, what's the problem? There's no problem. Banks can't repossess what they don't own. Can't take the car back if you own it. Hallelujah. And God is still getting people debt free. <laughs> Hallelujah. A thousand times more. Deuteronomy 111, the Lord, your God, of your fathers, make you a thousand times more and so many more as you are and bless you as he has promised you. One thousand is a number of covenant. If you remain in agreement with the Lord, your multiplication will be a thousand times more. Don't, don't. Well, some 30, some 60, some 100. That's great. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But those are baby steps. If we come to the place where we'll stay in covenant with God, He will make us a thousand times more. That's what I want. That's what I want for you. That's what I want for us. See, stay in agreement with God. One seed, from one seed, Abraham saw his descendants multiplied to millions. Amen. Hallelujah. And I want God to do it. My pastor told me a long time ago, he says, there's, there's two ways to build a church. One of them is learn how to bring a new rabbit out of the hat every week. And he could do that. He knew how to do that. I mean, he all, had all the big names come in and, you know, there was always something, somebody, a new face, a new voice every week. And he built a great church. It was great. Of course, it blew away after about five years because it was built on the rabbit. <laughs> it just hopped on out of sight. Or you can wait on God, believe God, and when he sets you on fire, people will come to see you burn. That's what I want. I want the fire truck to roll out here like it did at Azusa one time, you know, and hook up to the fire hose because there's flames coming out of the top of the roof and then they take another look and they're not real because it's the glory. <laughs> oh, that never happened. Well, I don't know. William Seymour said in 100 years it was going to happen. And that's where we're living right now. A hundred years later. And God's getting ready to do it again. I said he's getting ready to do it again. Amen. He is getting ready to do it again. Well, well, what's all that for? It's to bring the lost in. People will come to watch you burn. If you can get on fire for Jesus, if you can begin to walk in, the, in, in, in agreement with God, you become so totally other, you will absolutely unnerve everybody around you, and you'll have such favor, you won't know what to do with it. Hallelujah. God gives every covenant believer authority over at least a thousand. Joshua 23 and 10 says, One man of you shall chase a thousand. For the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you as he has promised. And remember, that then builds on this idea of unity because one puts to flight a thousand, but two, ten thousand. We stay in unit, we stay unity, we stay in covenant with God, whether you're, you're a couple, with a, you know, with a family, whatever, a church, you stay in unity, you stay in covenant with God, and, and you'll put to flight thousands. Victory is yours every single step of the way. Isaiah said that the least of you will become a thousand. The least of you. I don't know about me. You're the one that gets a thousand, and that's all you get. Till you change your attitude. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But the least of you shall become a thousand. Think about that. Ezekiel saw a river that increased by stages of a thousand cubits, which is what, uh, you know, a cubit's a, 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 what is it, a foot and a half, yard and a half, which is foot and a half. Yeah, it's 18 inches. So, you know, that's pretty deep, right? But in the same way, every time you multiply by a thousand, you move to the next level. I want to go to the next level. Don't you? I mean, you say, well, you're 70, you ought to retire. I've had people tell me that. Well, I, I, you know, when I'm 70, I want to retire. I don't, I want to refire. Amen. I want the rest of my years. Hallelujah. Don't, don't write me off just yet. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Ezekiel 47, 3. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. But if you'll remember those waters, every time he'd measure, the water would come up, and the water would come up until there was water to swim in. You couldn't cross, cross over it in the natural. I said you couldn't cross over it in the natural. It was water in which to swim. It was water that you could move in freely in the Spirit of God. Rebecca's family prayed that she would be the mother of thousands of millions. That's pretty radical. That's a lot of, woo be the mother. And you know what, Genesis 24, 60, they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you what, her progeny just are all over the world today. Because what God has said, He will do. You need to claim the covenant of a thousand. Stand in agreement with God that through your life a thousand people will enter the kingdom of God. If you can, if you can just get a hold of that, stand up. To stand and receive it. Let God pour into you. Stand in agreement with God that through your life, your finances, your influence, and your ministry, God will multiply you as the sand of the seashore. Do you dare stand up? Then stand up. If you dare to believe it, stand up. See, it's a, it's a monument to God. It's a testimony to God that, God, I believe you and I believe your word and I believe you can do with me what I've just heard this morning. So come on and do it. I don't know how you're going to do it. And I really don't care. Just come do it. Amen. Stand in agreement with God that you're blessed to be a multitude and a leader of, at the bare minimum, a thousand. Father, it's so far beyond what we think, and yet we know you will do it. It's in process even now, and we respond in faith, saying, Lord, here am I. Do with me as you will. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let it be done unto me according to thy word. If a virgin can conceive with that simple confession, God can bring His promise, His seed, His covenant to you. Hallelujah. And make it, make it just burst forth, break forth in your lifetime and bless your seed in Jesus' mighty name. So, let it be. Brought to you by Wellspring Ministries and Pastors George and Sharon Stover. We count it as a privilege and an honor to bring you the life-changing Word of God. To contact Wellspring Ministries, write us at 8140 West Lone Mountain Road, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89129. Or give us a call at 702-631-5027. Our email is wecan at wellspringministries.com. Visit our website at www.wellspringministries.com. Streaming live 24 hours a day at www.streamsinthedesert.tv.